The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. All these voices. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Staring into the Abyss. I am your host, horror author James Hershey Jr., and with me, as always, my co-host, old boy James Ash. How you doing, brother? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. How is everybody tonight? Tonight's show is going to be fun. We're going to be looking at a new mystery that has come up, and it's called The Well of Hell. Now, I don't want you to confuse this with The Well to Hell. That is a thing in supposedly according to the story was in russia down in uh up in siberia somewhere and supposedly they drilled down and they could hear screaming coming from the well and all that that turned out to be a hoax because they found out that the screaming that was coming from that well was actually tape recorded and it was looped and that's what people were hearing in the video so we're not talking about that one this is a new one in yemen that they're calling the well of hell and essentially it's just a big ass hole in the ground it's like 98 feet across or something like that i think so we have an article that we're going to do tonight and i kind of like the way last week's show went that was good and fun so i think we're going to do the same thing again so nigel yes james how may i be of service could you please read the article about the well of hell please of course i would be pleased to help tonight's article comes from WesternJournal.com. The headline is Locals say you can hear strange things. Coming from Well of Hell, mysterious hole in desert baffles scientists and officials. It was written by Taylor Penley. It was published July 4, 2021. The Well of Barhout. A mysterious gaping hole in Yemen's remote eastern desert has added itself to the many mysteries of the world. This 98-foot white hole believed to reach between 330 and 820 feet into the earth has been coined the well of hell. Sounds intimidating. Right. It should. After all, no one has ever reached the bottom. The well of hell continues to beguile geologists and invite natives to wield their imaginations as to what could be hidden inside the well's cavernous darkness. According to Xpica, Yemeni oral tradition depicts the pit as a prison of dark spirits sheltered by unbearable odors that come from its entrails. Also, supposedly, screams and voices are heard from the depths. Popular belief adds to its mystery, telling that all who approach the unfathomable pit will be sucked in without escape. Are either of these claims valid? Or are they a byproduct of centuries? millennia even of oral tradition yemeni geologists recently visited the pit to shed some light on its mystery unfortunately to little avail we went to visit the area and entered the well reaching depths of more than 50 to 60 meters 164 to 197 feet we noticed strange things inside we also smelled something strange Salah Bavar, managing director of the Mara Geological and Mineral Resources Authority, said according to Explica, it is a mysterious situation. Sunlight only faintly reaches inside the cavern, highlighting a few edges before fading into a darkness so profound that even attempts to observe the interior with cameras prove futile. Despite it all, according to the report, Various types of birds come and go, unbothered by a notable stench emanating from the depths. The space, however, 
isn't very accommodating for humans since as Bavare mentions. It retains low oxygen and no ventilation. That well of hell's displeasing stench. Which Amar Hashem Muhammad Osman, who performed military service in the area, described as resembling rotten eggs, likely would drive away anyone approaching its entrance. While the smell adds to the intense mystery. What can be said of long-standing legends of genies or jinns, essentially any spirit ranking lower than angels in Arab, Islamic tradition, allegedly living inside the well. Because of its mystery. Many natives prefer to ignore the well. And often even refrain from mentioning it. And. Of course. Not visit the site. For fear of bad luck. According to AccuWeather. Despite all the buzz. Bavare says the mysterious hole is far from a new phenomenon. In fact, it has captivated locals for years. We can speculate on the route of the cavern's scent. Perhaps it's a byproduct of gas traveling through the depths, creating a stench or sound that invokes our curiosity. Perhaps it's from decaying flesh from animals unlucky enough to fall in. Or even something as simple as bacteria polluted water. Resting at the bottom. Could the off-putting stench. Depth and supernatural mystery enshrouding the well of hell. Be nature's ways of safeguarding one of its darkest secrets. As much as we love to solve mysteries. Let's hope we find out soon. And that is the end. Of the article. Alright, thank you very much Nigel. You are very welcome sir. That was a very, very interesting article. And I think the... The best way to handle this is going to be to kind of break it into pieces and kind of attack each one individually. So let's start off with the smell that they talk about in the article. They say in the article that the smell is like rotten eggs. But I think it's fairly easy to figure out what that smell is. And I'm going to share that with you. I believe that most likely that smell is something called hydrogen sulfide. Now, for those who don't know what hydrogen sulfide is, you are in for a treat, because I'm going to get real sciencey here on you. But this is super, super interesting stuff. I'm going to explain what this is and where all you can find it and how common it is. It's very fascinating. Hydrogen sulfide is a colorless, flammable gas, okay? And it smells like rotten eggs. Now, most people don't call it hydrogen sulfide. Most people know it as sewer gas, is what they call it. Hydrogen sulfide is heavier than air. So what that means is that it will usually build up in low-lying areas and enclosed spaces. Because it's heavier than air, it sinks down below the air. So you're going to find it at very low areas. So a deep well or a deep hole in the ground would definitely meet the criteria of being a low-lying area with an enclosed space. Now let's talk about why I believe that the smell is being caused by hydrogen sulfide. Because it's not just the fact that it's found in low-lying areas and it smells like rotten eggs that makes me think this. There's a lot that goes into this theory for me. Hydrogen sulfide is produced from the decomposition or the, the bacterial breakdown of dead plants and dead animals. Now this bacterial decomposition is supercharged, so to speak. It's sped up greatly in low oxygen environments. Now we know from the article, they said in the article that this environment, this hole or this well as they call it, has very little oxygen. It's a very low oxygen area. So that would cause this decomposition and these bacteria to kind of go on a feeding frenzy. And it would cause a lot more of that smell and a lot stronger version of that rotten egg smell. So in nature, hydrogen sulfide appears in all kinds of places. And some of them are actually quite surprising. So it appears in unrefined natural gas and petroleum. So when it's still in the ground before it goes to the refinery and goes through that whole chemical process, when it's in its natural state, you find high levels of hydrogen sulfide. 
You find hydrogen sulfide in volcanic gases. You find it in sulfur deposits. That's why people say that sulfur smells like rotten eggs. It's because of the hydrogen sulfide in the sulfur deposit. You find it in hot springs. And you find it a lot of times, believe it or not, in swamps. Because you have a lot of decaying plant matter in the swamp. And that puts off that smell. Hydrogen sulfide is what gives all of these things that rotten egg smell that people know so well. Now, hydrogen sulfide is also found, and warning before I do this, I'm about to get a little gross, but hydrogen sulfide is also found in human and animal feces. And it's one of the main contributors to making human flatulence, let's say it that way, smell the way that it does. A small amount of hydrogen sulfide is even found inside of your mouth and it contributes to bad breath. Like when you wake up with morning breath, that's one of the things that causes that is the hydrogen sulfide that builds up in your mouth. So I believe that that solves the smell part of, th of this mystery. I think that explains why that rotten egg smell is present and it explains what that rotten egg smell is, what is causing it. Because we're talking about essentially what they're calling a well. It, it's a pretty big hole but I imagine it narrows as it goes down. So it's very possible that you have animals that fall into that hole. As a matter of fact, I would say it's more than possible. It's almost a guarantee because the majority of cave systems and stuff like that, that they find, they find bones down in them of animals that have fallen in and are kind of trapped and can't get back out. So where you have an animal that has fallen down and died, you are going to have hydrogen sulfide because it's one of the byproducts of the decomposition process because of the bacteria breaking down the body. It also comes as I said from decaying plant matter and you would have some of that down in that hole as well. So now let's deal with the the strange sounds of screaming that they're claiming in this article that have been heard there. Now I don't have one magic answer for this like I did for the smell but I definitely can see several different possible explanations that would explain this. Now in the article they admitted that they don't really know for sure how deep the hole is and they don't really know what's down there past about the 60 meter point I believe is what they said. So it is entirely possible that there are tunnels that are interlaced throughout a a cavern system underneath the ground there that link up with this hole. They're probably, if it's anything like other cave systems all over the world, most likely it's all connected in some way. You have the hole going down, you have tunnels going off in different directions and different depths, and you have some of them opening up into caverns, you have times when they're flooded, all that kind of stuff. That's kind of the, the way it always works with cave systems, and I would assume that this would be exactly the same. Because remember, this is not a hole that somebody has drilled, okay? This thing is like 98 uh, meters across, I think they said, or 98 feet across. So if it's that large, it's not something that was drilled. This is a natural hole. This is like part of a, most likely a cave system, and it probably has underground caverns, it has tunnel offshoots, all that stuff. So it is entirely possible that there are tunnels that connect to this hole. That's kind of my point. And as I said, very common. So that being said, it's possible that what is being heard at some times there, because it's not heard all the time, it's just sometimes people hear it. It's possible that what they're hearing might be the sound of the tunnels themselves. There could be water rushing through there. It could be that the tunnel has flooded. And there could be some of those tunnels where the water reaches almost to the top, but not quite, so it's just below the ceiling of the tunnel itself and if that occurs if you have air that's passing through there because you have different pressures you have a large cavern going into a smaller tunnel leading into a another cavern something like that you could definitely have airflow going through there and if you know anything about about the way air behaves it behaves in a lot of ways like water does as well to where if you take your garden hose and you turn it on you have a stream of water coming out but if you stick your thumb over top the hole it increases the pressure of that water because you're, you're reducing the area where the water can travel. So you're going to get an increase of pressure. 
if you do that with air, like with an air nozzle, when you have like uh, a compressor and an air gun, the smaller one you use, the stronger the air that comes out of it because you're doing the exact same thing you do with the water hose. So if you have a tunnel that normally has air passing through it and that tunnel floods, which happens all the time in underground cavern systems, and you have a very small amount of area above the water, in between the water and the, the roof of the tunnel, that's going to force that air to move through that tunnel at a much more rapid rate. And a lot of times what happens is that will create a high-pitched sound. Uh, depending on how much space there is, that sound can be anything from a, a squealing, almost a whistly kind of sound, all the way to what sounds like a shrieking, screaming kind of sound. So that is absolutely one possible explanation to what that sound is they're hearing. And it is completely logical and it completely makes sense with the idea of it being an underground cavern system. So sticking with the hypothesis that there's a system of underground caverns, one has to assume that this quote unquote well of hell is not the only entrance into this cavern system. There's gonna be multiple different entrances. Now we already talked about the fact that it is almost a guarantee that some animals have fallen into this hole and ended up at the bottom and that is why you have the smell. So it's also possible that if there's multiple tunnels and there's multiple caverns and there's multiple ways in and out, it's also possible that at some point animals wander into the cave system. Some will make the very outer section of that cave system their home and they'll live in the cave. But some will venture into the cave system through a hole and they will end up inevitably getting lost in that cave system and trapped to where they can't get back out. So it's quite possible that an animal at some point wandered in there and what people are hearing are the panicked screams of that animal. Because if you've ever done a lot of hunting or you've lived on a farm and had to butcher animals, if an animal doesn't die right away and there's pain involved and there's fear involved, almost every animal is going to scream. Now, I know that might not be something that most people know, but animals are fully capable of screaming. And a lot of them do, and it is a terrifying sound to hear. So what you might simply be hearing is an animal that is trapped down in the cavern somewhere in one of the tunnels or the cavern system itself or, or this hole, and is simply screaming its little head off, panicking, trying to get out. That's also 100% possible and 100% logical. Now the article also states that birds regularly fly in this area and fly down into the hole. Now if we assume that the hole narrows at some point as it goes down, it is possible that a bird flew down into that narrower section. And in the narrow section, they're not going to be able to generate as much thrust with their wings to get back out of that hole. They're going to be stuck in there. For people that have wood stoves, in their homes, it happens every year. You have a bird that figures out a way to get into your chimney and it goes down the chimney and it can't get back up because it doesn't generate enough thrust because there's not enough air there. It's an enclosed space and it can't get back out of the chimney. It can't fly back out. So it just gets stuck there and eventually it wanders down your pipe and into your wood stove. And every year when winter comes, like late fall, when you open up the wood stove to start to burn for the year, you find one or two birds in there that are dead. Every single year. It happens every single year. So it's quite possible that we know there are birds that are flying in that area. And it's also almost a guarantee that a bird is going to fly down into an area it can't get back out of, especially if you have a massive reduction in the area of the hole which is almost guaranteed as well because you find that in pretty much every cave system in the world. You have some tunnels that get very, very small that you can barely fit through. And then there's some that widen out to where you can drive a car through if you want to. And there's some that are so small you can't even get into them. That's a common theme in every single underground cave system. So I don't see any reason why this would be different. So knowing that to be true, if a bird was to fly down into a smaller area like that, 
the exact same thing would happen that happens every year in your chimney. That bird would not be able to fly back out. So it's going to end up down there stuck. And it's not going to die right away because it's going to live on whatever insects it can find in the cave or the tunnel or wherever it is. And they're full of bugs. And if there's any kind of water source, it could live for a while down there. But you might be hearing that thing shrieking and making a hell of a racket trying to get back out. So that is another possible explanation. Now, these are all logical, scientific explanations that can explain some of the phenomena that is being reported here. So I think that, I don't know if it solves the screaming part of this mystery, but it at least gives multiple possible explanations that are logical and scientifically plausible. So let's move on now to the question of the gins, the more fantastic part of this article. Now, when people think of gins, some people don't know what gins are at all. Gins are what we call genies in the West. Uh, they come from the Arabic world and they are essentially a form of an Arabic demon. But demon is not the same way we think of demon. When we think of demon, we think of like the opposite of God. We think of hell. We think of that kind of thing. In the Arabic lore, demons are not necessarily the same kind of demons we think of here. Most spirits are called demons in Arabic lore. But what we would call a jinn is a genie, basically. Now, a lot of people don't know a whole lot about genies or jinns. They think that the only information on jinns out there is what they see on movies and TV, where they live inside of a magic lamp and you rub it and you get three wishes. But in the actual lore on jinns, there's a hell of a lot more to it. These things can live in all sorts of places, not just lamps. There's a lot of lore about them living inside of trees and inside of like stumps and rotten logs and different things like that. There's even stories of them living inside of rock structures. I think that's interesting because what is a cave? It's a rock structure, right? A hollowed out rock is all it is. So theoretically, it would be possible, according to the lore, for a djinn to be living down here in this cave system somewhere. 100% possible, according to the lore. Now, it's also interesting in this article, they talk about that according to the legends of this area, this particular hole, or what they call the well of hell, if you get too close to it, they say you'll be sucked in and you're never seen or heard from again. That's interesting to me because it kind of matches up with the lore of the djinn. Because, see, people think of djinn and genies, they think, like I said, of the lamps and the wishes. But the actual lore of djinn isn't all about wishes. It has a little bit of that in it, but these things basically feed off of your life force, off of you. They will take you into a, an area like this cave would be a perfect area. And they will feed off of your, your fear and, and adrenaline and, and all of your negative emotion. And they do that by, by causing you to enter into almost a dreamlike state where you hallucinate and have these vivid dreams that are terrifying and they just feed off of you while you're in that state that is what the actual lore on gins talks about some of it so if there was a gin that lived in this cave system a lot of the things that they're talking about in this article would kind of match up to that lore so i can't really say anything to disprove the idea that there might be a djinn there. One thing that would be interesting to know is how many reports are there of missing people. The legends talk about if you get too close to it, you get sucked in and you're never seen or heard from again. But do we have actual documentation of that? Do we have verified official police reports coming out of the area of people going missing there. Now I imagine you probably have a couple 
at least. Because this is in Yemen, and it is in a remote area. So I imagine there have been people that have went out there and fallen in. I also imagine that there have been people that have met with foul play and ended up deposited there. That would make total sense as well. The problem is the area is not, let's put it this way, it's not America, okay, where everything is well documented and you can simply go and do a search and find all the police records and all the official records on a particular place and be able to make a, a determination that way. You find that in America and Australia and England and a lot of, of the more Western kind of civilized countries where they have more of a, a structure in place. Yemen's a little bit more Wild Westy. You know what I mean? You, it's kind of wild out there. So you don't have as much structure in the government and the government systems to where everything is as well documented and it's as easy to find that kind of information. But that's one thing that would help us to make a determination of whether there is something there, whether it be a Jenner or something else, is looking at the actual case files of people that have gone missing in that area and then being able to, to determine whether something is actually going on there. I think to do that, you'd probably actually have to travel to Yemen and, and meet with the local officials there and, and kind of dig into it that way. Because I don't think you're going to find a whole lot of that stuff digitally to be able to just figure it out. So is it possible that there is a djinn or some sort of, of entity or creature like that there? It's possible. It would match the stories that are being told about the place. But the problem is we don't know for a fact that any of those stories are true. We don't know if there's been anybody really that's disappeared there. We don't know if there's been a lot of people that have disappeared there. We don't know what's gone on, really. So there's no way to really make a concrete determination. So on that, I would say it's plausible that you could be dealing with some sort of malevolent entity that wants to do people harm in that area. But there's zero tangible evidence that I could point to that says, look at these reports. This person, this person, this person, they all went there and they ended up getting sucked into a hole and they're gone. I don't have that information. It's, it's not available to me. So I can't make that concrete determination. So I will say plausible, but in my opinion, not probable because we have scientific explanations for every, every other bit of this. All of it is explainable. Now, one thing that's concerning to me is in the article, they talk about a team of geologists from Yemen that, that actually went to the hole and they tried to go down a little ways and they got, I think they said 60 meters down and they just couldn't go any further because there's a lack of oxygen. They couldn't see anything. And so to me, that's a little bit concerning because I am not a geologist, but I know what hydrogen sulfide is and I can very easily solve this mystery and debunk it without barely spending any time on it. So if I can do that, and my uh, area of study is not geology, my area of study was astrophysics and, and astronomy and space. But if I can figure this out that quickly, why don't they? You see what I'm saying? Why, why don't a, a team of, ge of geologists know what the hell hydrogen sulfate is? Why don't they understand what's making that rotten egg smell? Why can't they figure out what those sounds that they're hearing could be if they're geologists? You have to assume that they've, they've examined cave systems before. They, they have to be familiar with the smells and the sounds of, of being underground. You know, I've done, I've done gold mining in my past. I, I've done prospecting and, and it's something I enjoy and really like to do is go out and hunt for gold. And I can tell you a lot about cave systems and about underground caverns and stuff like that. And, and the behaviors of cave systems and what the smells are and all those things I've been in them. You would have to assume that a team of geologists also would have been in those same kind of situations. So for them to say that something strange is going on and that it's weird what they're hearing and smelling doesn't make sense to me. Unless there's something that was so out of the ordinary that it cannot be explained away like I explained it. 
But if that's the case, why wasn't that mentioned in the article? If they had something that was so different, you would think they would have included that in the article. I guarantee the geologists would have talked about it. Why did they not talk about it, or why did they not include it in the article? That to me is a red flag. That tells me that what we're dealing with here most likely is not a situation where you have a strange occurrence happening that can't be explained. What we're dealing with here is a situation where there's very simple scientific explanations for all of the phenomena they talked about. And they're trying to hype things up and kind of manufacture a spooky tale by saying that it's strange and weird and all this. Because there's nothing strange about this. There's nothing weird about this. About the things that they describe, the smells and the sounds. There's nothing weird about it. If you spend any time going caving, any time underground, you're going to hear and smell these things. It's nothing out of the ordinary. So for them to say that is a red flag to me. Without explaining what the strange thing was. Because the thing about geologists, they're, they're scientists, right? So scientists don't simply say, yeah, I did this experiment and the result was weird. And then they just leave. They don't do that. They might say, yeah, I got a real weird result. It was kind of strange. And, and then they go into detail explaining, okay, I did this step and then this happened. And then this reaction took place, which was not what I was expecting. And, and because this was added and all this, right? They're going to go into detail and explain to you what was weird. What was strange? What reaction or result took place that they were not expecting? They're not simply going to say, oh, it's weird and we don't know what the hell's going on. That's, that's not science. That's not what scientists do. So to me, major red flag. So that's my ruling on it. I think that the smell can be explained. I think that the, the sounds can be explained. And I think that the rest of it is probably just either make-believe or them trying to hype up a story to get people to go there for tourism or something. There, there's some angle to make money on this, I guarantee it. And that's probably what this all boils down to. So that's my ruling on it. I'm going to throw over to Old Boy now and get his opinion. So Old Boy, go ahead, brother. Thank you, brother. Um, the well of hell, huh? I think I'm going to have to agree with James. I think it's folks lore. It's been there for over millions and millions of years. I was reading a little bit about it. And it's not the only well of hell. There's one at Russia. guy in Russia supposedly digged 40,000 feet. I was reading a story about that. It's a different story. But it's by Norway or, or the peninsula. And he supposedly almost dig to the part of hell where you can hear people screaming and yelling. And, and it's so hot and thousands of degrees. I think it's another story. Plus, Yemen, we're not – I don't think – we're too friendly with them right now because of, you know, in the United States. So we can't send anybody over there. So I think I agree with James. I think that's probably what is the sofa they smell smelling is probably that um, probably underwater uh, wells there. They're saying it's from 320 feet to about 850, but they still haven't reached the bottom. Uh, they did send like drones down there at about 250, 250 mil, meter, uh, meters to 300 million, uh, 100 meters and still kept going. So there's birds that fly out of it and they said stuff sucks you in and supposedly it was a, a prison for, uh, the, the folklore says it's a prison of uh, for demons and genies. The gen, if you want to go buy it, uh, it's the same thing, just different name. So I, I kind of agree. It's a cool story when there's supposed to be experts going down there and they don't know what's down there and and, and it's pretty easy. James is not an expert in that and, and geologist. So, but he kind of pretty much figured it out. It's not that hard, but it is kind of weird. That there's a big hole in the middle of the desert. It's about 150 feet to 250 feet law, uh, wide too. On top of that, it's just a big hole. It goes deep in the ground. That's, that's crazy. It's just a big wonder. They were saying it's a, it's a, it's a giant mystery. And, but I think all that other stuff, it just added, folk tale and and superstition throughout the, the world and of that area you know there's a lot of you know people who probably believe that and still do for thousands of years that there's probably demons and gen and stuff like that it's just like with other stories you hear like um the headless horseman and 
you know, I'm just showing you examples of what we've saw and Disney took it. And I'm surprised we haven't seen a movie about it because I know they made a movie about the other one, but I, I, I bet you that's next. Cause I know they made a movie in 89 about the one in Russia where the guy drilled to hell. So I won't be surprised eventually, eventually we'll hear movies about there's some kind of creature in there, a giant cave monster or something, or giants or something. That'd be kind of funny. Are these giant genies that come out and attack people? Because the gen, that's a whole different story. Do I believe in the gen? I do. They talk about the gen through a lot of biblical things about the genies so and other religions. So that's a whole different story. Do I think they're in prison in this hole? Probably not. Do I think it's a hell, a hole to hell? Probably not. I mean, it's not impossible. I just think it's funny every time there's a hole to nowhere or something, it's always got to be hell or demons in it, giant monsters. It's always some kind of fear mongering. And it, it happens a lot with everything. And I think that's the first thing that you always got to put a red flag on. It's people fear what they don't know. It's really giant hole. They smell some weird smells. They hear something and they think that. And that happens with a lot of things like um, giant statues that people said it come to life and or other creatures that, you know, we do crypto. So, you know, like the giant dinosaurs in the jungle and people said they seen them and then you see it's something else. It's a lizard or something. People... I think work on people's fears and I think that's what's happened here and their governments worked on the fears of trying to make something where it's not. There's nothing probably about this hole. It probably has some stuff going on. It's a giant uh, work of nature. That's cool. You know, and, and, but I don't think there's no hole to hell or genies or all that. I just think that's, that's folklore and storytelling. They probably told stories of the year, but remember all stories have some of truth to it. Maybe there was something that lived there before. Maybe there was genies that lived there. And, or maybe they threw people down there to die when you, you did something bad back in the day. They threw, or maybe they still do. You never know. You never know with the, how these uh, different countries are. They have different laws and different ways, you know. They could have thrown people down there to uh, satisfy the, the, God, the demons so they wouldn't come and attack their, their, their farms and their, and their country around there. Because there's a lot of farming there. A lot of, uh, um, they, I know they have a lot of camels and uh, what are the, I, I'm forgetting the word, La llamas I think they are. They, they do a lot of, and, and sheep herding out there. So they were probably doing that so they wouldn't attack their farms or sheep at the time and their houses or villages out there. So, I mean, a lot of people do this back then. We, I mean, there's a, everywhere, uh, you know, the, the Romans did it. And the Aztecs did. There was a lot of people who did a lot of sacrificing things. And they probably did the same thing, thinking there was some kind of go god or genie in this, this area. It's a really cool story, but yeah, I, I kind of agree with James. I don't think there's much to it. I think it could be all explained. I think if James, or they got some... Uh, known ge geologists down there and they actually found out what's down there i mean if you can't can only go so long you can't see anything can't smell but we have equipment where you could see in the in the ocean and even in the deep parts of it so i think we could probably figure out which that how far it goes but i don't believe it's a hole to hell uh, i just think that's another fear to, uh, another just people's fears like always I think that's that, that. It's always that. It's always funny. That's the first thing. It's hell or demons or genies. It could be just a hole with gases there and water and and animals living there. I believe there's something that might be there. Oh, might be living there. I don't think it's just birds. Maybe there's some kind of creatures we've never seen. Maybe it is a hole. To I mean, there's always a possibility. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's not probable. Maybe there is another world in there. You never know. We don't know what goes on. We, I mean, I can't say this 100%. I'm just trying to give it the benefit of the doubt to make it more so you guys are enjoying it. What do you guys think? Let us know what you think is in this hole. Is it demons or is it monsters? Is it genies? Is there a giant in there? A giant worm or something? I don't know. <laughs> or is it just a bunch of crap just to make, you know, to get them on TV? 
so they can have somebody come out there and, you know, they can get a bunch of cells of T-shirts or something. I mean, you're not saying that's true. Just like Area 51, you know, that's there's a lot of stuff. People are selling shirts for that, stickers, and there's all kinds of stuff. Like with aliens, there's just it's just people are trying to make a buck out of everything. Just like the paranormal world, you know, that we, we don't even need to go to that. They, we all know what's going on with that. So saturated, but it could be a lot of things. So there you go, James. That's my opinion. Yeah, I always think it's funny that everything always has to be so dramatic. You know, whenever you have one of these weird places, it's always got to have the, the hell symbolism and it's always got to be like super spooky and super scary and all that kind of stuff. One thing that a lot of the real paranormal investigators, I'm not talking about the ones that are kind of fly by night, they don't really know what they're doing, they're just kind of wander into the field because it's popular and then get back out when it's not. I'm talking about the people that have been doing it a long time. One thing that they always do, the good ones, is they always try to find logical scientific explanations for why whatever phenomena is happening is happening, right? So if you, you've all heard of like EMF. So you go into a place and they're reporting, you know, feeling weird and, and seeing things and hearing things and all this. And they think that there's a ghost there. One thing a lot of these paranormal investigators will do is, is they will check the EMF levels and look for spikes. And they'll try to determine if that's coming from a power line or something like that that's running over the property. Because high levels of EMF have been known to cause hallucinations and known to cause uh, this weird unsettling feeling of being watched and those kind of things. So a lot of the, the descriptions that people give of what they're experiencing in their home, sometimes that will have a scientific explanation. Sometimes they, they talk about they hear different sounds in the house or a door will shut or something like that on its own. And then when you kind of check it out, you kind of open the door and you, you sit it like midway and you just wait and see what happens. And sometimes there's like a cross breeze that blows through that particular area of the house and it'll shut the door. It'll create a suction and it'll shut the door. And so then you have a, a scientific explanation of why that particular thing is happening or whatever sound they're hearing. A lot of old houses, they'll settle in weird ways uh, that have, if they have furnaces down in the bottom, in the basement, a lot of times the furnace will, will knock and make different sounds. So a lot of these things can be explained by doing a little actual investigative work. Basically what I'm saying is not everything is a ghost or a demon or whatever. A lot of times what you're dealing with has a very logical explanation. And then also a lot of times there's mental illness involved where you go and you talk to the person and they believe that they are possessed by a demon or, or they're being harassed by a demon or something like that. And in, in a lot of these cases, what we have is a person that is suffering from mental illness. And as you investigate and you, you dig into their past and ask them questions, that's why the interview process is so important and it is always should be the very first thing that you do in an investigation. You don't want to just show up with equipment and start acting like they do on TV, right? That's not what you do. In a real investigation, first you're going to talk to the people. They're going to tell you there's a problem and you say, okay, we're going to come out and, and investigate for you. So then you show up, but you don't show up with your whole team and your equipment and all that right away. You show up one or two of you. And you sit down at a table with the people and you talk to them and you figure out exactly what the hell is going on in their house, right? You want to know what they're experiencing. You want to know what they're hearing, what they're seeing, if there's any smells, all those things. And then you also are going to talk about their mental health. You're going to want to know if any of them are on any kind of mental medications. You're going to want to know if any of them see a psychiatrist or if they have a history of mental illness or if, if the 
somebody in the family has a history of mental illness. All of these things are very, very important because they help you to determine what's actually going on. Now, a lot of times people will get a, a kind of slanted view of, well, let's just use us, for example, of what we do, okay? Because what we bring you on this show and what we bring you on Tales from the Abyss are the cases where we have actual paranormal activity going on. Because those are the ones that make good TV, and they're the ones that make for a good radio show. When we can describe to you and explain to you what is happening in a house, and that it is absolutely something paranormal, and there's something exciting that's going on. What you don't see is the hundreds of cases that we go on that don't have any paranormal activity at all. But the people would swear to you that it is happening in their home. And you go and you investigate and you find out that their child is being attacked or they're being attacked or whatever. And then you learn that, well, they're on three different mental medications and they've been committed three or four times and, and they're seeing a psychiatrist on a regular basis. And, and some of them have diagnosis of schizophrenia and they say they hear voices of demons talking to them and well yeah that's part of schizophrenia you hear voices so that's explainable you know you have those kind of cases as well and believe it or not that is a huge portion of the cases that you go and actually check out and investigate is these cases that have rational explanations there's been cases that i've went on where the people Say they hear people knocking on the walls and walking around and stuff. And when you go and you actually investigate, you spend a little bit of time down in the basement with the furnace, you find out that the furnace is knocking and that's what you're, that's what they're hearing. Or you find out that, as I mentioned earlier, there's a draft that goes when they have a window open in this room, it causes a draft to go through the house and it slams the door in a room next to it or something. That's happened. And there is a perfectly logical explanation that would explain why they are experiencing what they are experiencing. Now, in those cases, you might still do like a spirit box or, you know, EVP session, that kind of thing, just to kind of narrow down and make sure that you're right about the logical explanation and that there is nothing going on. And then sometimes it's so blatantly obvious that there's a logical explanation that you don't even have to do that. And in some cases, the family's simply looking for an explanation. They just want to know what's going on. And when you give them the explanation, they're happy. In other cases, you have people that are seeking attention and they, they don't want to accept the fact that they don't have any kind of paranormal or spiritual thing happening at their home. And they might argue a little bit about it. But in, I'm not going to say the overwhelming majority of cases, but in the majority of cases, there are logical reasons why the phenomena is taking place. And then you have the ones where you can't explain it. So after you do your initial interview and you do a walk of the house and you try to come up with reasons why the stuff is happening that are not paranormal and you fail, you can't find any reason that explains what's going on. You don't have any red flags that come up in the interview then you go in with the team and you actually do the investigation you try to figure out what's happening and in some of those cases you get some pretty spectacular things that go on and get captured on camera and captured on audio and and we bring those to you but i want to explain that just because you watch episodes of tales from the abyss for example and you see all this crazy stuff going on that is not every case that is not even the normal that is the exception not the rule the majority of these cases are boring as hell you go there and you investigate you find a logical explanation and you solve it that way and then there's been other cases we've gone and there's no logical explanation and you do multiple investigations at the home where you do EVP sessions, you do the spirit box, you do everything you can do and you get nothing. Just absolutely nothing happens. You get no response, you get no sound, you get nothing. And that's happened as well. And in that case, you can't really 
tell the family, look, there's nothing going on here. You don't have anything in your home. You can't really say that because it just might not be active at the moment. So all you can really do is say, we didn't find anything. Not saying it's not happening to you. We didn't find anything. We've been here two or three times now. We found nothing so far. So it's a mixed bag. But I don't want anybody to have the impression that every case is off the wall scary. And majority of times it's actually very boring. You, you spend hour after hour after hour and get very little. Now you don't see that on the channel. You don't see that on the TV show. You don't see that on the radio show. You don't get to see that side of investigating. But that side is very, very prevalent. And I think getting back to the well of hell, that's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with one of those situations where there's a perfectly logical scientific reason for why this phenomenon has taken place. I don't think that there's anything really paranormal happening here. I think it's absolutely explainable. I think you're also dealing with a situation where there's a little bit of sensationalism happening. To where they're kind of turning this into a, a spooky tale when it doesn't deserve to be. They don't have any actual examples of people that have gone missing. If it was an actual problem where you had a lot of people that were going missing, they would be mentioning different cases of people that have gone missing. But they don't. All they say is that Legend says that if people show up, they get sucked in and you never see them again. But there's no examples of that given. You have the geologists that are saying there's weird, strange things happening, but they don't go into any detail on what those things are, which is not scientific. That is not the way scientists behave. So I think once again, you have a little bit of sensationalism happening. I think what this is, is you have some people that don't understand the science that have said that this place is some sort of hole that leads to hell. And it got picked up and people thought, hey, this makes a good story. This will sell papers. This will sell articles. It'll get hits on the website. So they ran with it and they sensationalized it and made it into some spooky story. And there's really nothing here. That's my opinion on it. I could be wrong. I mean, as I said, it's plausible that there could be something there because it does line up with the lore of what they say is there, the gen. But I think if there were an actual gen there and it was actually happening, you would have a much bigger problem of people going missing. It would be to the point where you would hear about it. There would be actual reports. Where they not only say people disappear here, but they would say we've had a hundred people this year that have went there and disappeared. Or we've had this couple that went there for a picnic or whatever and disappeared. They would be giving examples to where you could say, oh, hey, let me look into that, you know. But just that broad statement of, yeah, if you go there, you'll get sucked in and never be seen again. I don't buy it. So that's my ruling on it. That's the show. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to throw back over to Old Boy and get his final shout-outs. Thank you, brother. Yeah, if you guys like this uh, story, let us know. Tell us what you think right in the comments in the, in the videos that when we put it on YouTube, you guys tell us what you think. I think it's the same thing. It's just something blown out of nothing. I want to thank all our listeners from Parax Radio every Sunday night listening to us, 9 Pacific, 12 Eastern, technically Monday morning. And we are getting played on reruns now on Parax at 5 Pacific 8 Eastern on Tuesday nights, technically. Um, you guys want to listen to us all the time and listen to our show? Go to James Hershey's YouTube page and subscribe. You can listen to all the t content we on there for free. We have a lot of content, a lot of shows you guys would enjoy, so check it out. Um, you guys want any merchandise? I'll tell you where to go. Get shirts, COVID masks, iPhone cases, all kinds of cool stuff, so he'll let you know where that's at, and he'll check it out. And... I hope you guys enjoy your week. It's July now. I hope you guys are enjoying your summer. I know it's hot in certain places, so I hope you're keeping cold. 
So, good night, misfits, sugar ladies, monster lovers, and demon hunters. I love you, and have a good night, and blessed be. The YouTube channel is uh, youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr. That's where everything is. You got paranormal news. You've got Tales from the Abyss. You got Staring into the Abyss. You've got different audio books. You got all kinds of paranormal stuff. Awesome little site. I got, I think, about 800 videos now on the channel. So there's tons of stuff there for you. It's 100% free. So please go there and subscribe to the channel and enjoy it on the youtube video for this show in the description box there will be all the links i have the links to the different playlists for all the different shows so you can click on that and you can literally watch hundreds of videos if you choose to also in that description box i put the link to the merchandise store because they changed it. It used to be teespring.com slash store slash staring into the abyss. But now it's some weird, it's called spring or the spring or, or something like that now. So they changed the entire name of everything. So go to the show on YouTube and look in the description box. And the link to the merchandise store will be there. That's where all the merch is. There's tons and tons of different stuff. All kinds of different designs. Really good quality, low price. If you want to support the show and you're into merch, that is a great way to do so. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for hanging out. And I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Until we speak to you again, love many, trust few, and do harm to none. God loves you. And so do we. Bye-bye.